Good afternoon, everyone. Today we're excited to talk about iOS deployments and getting ahead of the curve. Here today to talk about iOS deployments is a very seasoned Jamf, Kelly Watkins Conrad, who has been on board with us for nearly seven years. My name is Jen Kaplan. I'm the manager of marketing here at Jamf. Let's take a look at today's agenda. Kelly's going to walk us through enrollment with Apple School Manager, Apple Configurator, and user-initiated enrollment. If you have any questions throughout today's webinar, feel free to enter them into the Q&A or chat box in the webinar panel, and we'll get to as many questions as we can at the conclusion of the webinar. For those on the line who are new to Jamf, we'll do a quick overview of who we are. Uh, Jamf has been helping organizations succeed with Apple, and we're really the standard for Apple management. We do so with our two products, Jamf Now and Jamf Pro. And Jamf helps more than 15,000 organizations manage more than 10 million Apple devices. We serve about 6,000 schools, with 5,000 of those coming from K-12 through and 1,000 from higher education. We are found in six of the top 10 U.S. school districts, and we help 112 of the 114 connected schools. But more importantly, we empower over 7 million teachers and students with our software. And finally, here at Jamf, we have a history of keeping up with Apple and providing ze day zero support for their new operating systems and services. Here you can see our track record, which we're excited to continue this fall with iOS 12 and all of the other operating systems released by Apple. And now I will pass it over to today's speaker, Kelly Watkins Conrad. Thanks, Jen. So as our agenda had covered, we're gonna be covering a few different ways to enroll your iOS devices into your Jamf Pro instance. The first method that we're gonna be covering today is enrolling using Apple School Manager. So devices that have been purchased on March 1st, 2011 or later are eligible to be in Apple School Manager. And in order to sign up, you'll just need to go to school.apple.com. And that's for both our K-12 friends and our friends over in our higher education space. But you might be wondering, why would I actually want to do that? What advantage do I gain by enrolling using Apple School Manager? And really, it's just like this picture that you see here. This three-step process that isn't really three steps. So as you can see, no heavy IT involvement is required, which is awesome. You can have that customized setup assistant set up ahead of time. And I'm pretty sure most of you will agree with me that if you're going through unboxing iPads and setting them up yourself, it gets really old after about the second time you do it. And so I'm also willing to bet that even if you spent all day unboxing, setting up those iPads, that if you knew you had a brand new iPad waiting for you when you got home, you would probably be very excited to go through and set up your own iPad. So why don't we let our end users go through and set it up on their own, let them have that awesome experience of setting up their own device, and really, you're scoring big time because you look like the hero and you're basically letting them do all the work for you. So your users will appreciate it. And in the end, it saves you a ton of time by not having to open all those boxes and configuring the devices. So it's really a win-win for both us and for our end users. So I realize that not everyone has seen what this process looks like. And I'm going to apologize in advance. I had a nice video, but it didn't quite work out. It was a little too choppy. So we're just gonna go through a few slides on what this looks like on an end user's iPad. So here we see the familiar start screen of the hellos. And so we're gonna go ahead and open up our iPad. And first we get to select our language. Then we're gonna go ahead and select our country. And this page is new. So if you have a device that has iOS 11, you probably see the prompt saying that it wants to help you set up that iPad. Now, it's worth noting that if you are able to wipe your device using your Jamf Pro, that you're able to actually skip this step. However, for any new devices that are uh, coming out of the box, you won't be able to skip this. But for our purpose, we're just going to go ahead and set up manually. Next, we're going to go ahead and connect to a Wi-Fi network. And I highly suggest that we have an open enrollment network at the time uh, that you're setting up your iPads, simply because going through and entering in a password can be kind of a pain in the butt. Next, once we connect our iPad to the network, it's gonna communicate back to Apple and see if there's any special instructions. And what we're going to see is that, yes, we actually do have a customized setup that we want this iPad to respect. 
So once we see the retrieving configuration, we'll see this remote management slide, which is different if you're just going through a consumer iPad. So what this is doing is saying that we're having special instructions to enroll this device, and then it's also going to enroll into our Jamf server. So I'll go ahead and I'll hit Next, and we'll see that it's installing the MDM profile and CA certificate onto our iPad in order to establish that communication. And then Next, welcome to iPad. So I skipped a ton of different screens that normally happen in this process to make it as simple as possible. And now I can go ahead, get right onto my iPad and do whatever I need to do, playing games, doing work, what have you. So you're probably super pumped about this because that was pretty awesome. And you're probably wondering, well, how do I actually set this up on my end? So we're gonna scoot over to our Jamf Pro server. And if you haven't seen Jamf before, it looks pretty awesome now with our Jamf Pro version 10. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select the gear at the top right to bring us to our settings page. Once we're in our settings page, under the global management section, we're gonna select the device enrollment program. Next, we're gonna go ahead and grab our public key from our Jamf Pro instance. We're gonna need this public key to upload it into our Apple School Manager. So then, keeping this page open for your Jamf Pro server, we'll go to our school.apple.com and we're gonna to go to our MDM servers on the left-hand side, and then we'll select the add new MDM server along the top there. Once we've done that, we'll see this little pop-up with the upload file, and go ahead and select your public key that we just downloaded from our Jamf Pro instance. And once we've done that, the download server token button will light up in blue, and you'll be able to download that certificate. Once we have done that, we'll go back to our Jamf Pro server, and now we're gonna go ahead and open the new button to allow us to have a new integration. Once we've done that, we'll have the ability to upload our server token, and then we can go ahead and save. So super simple process. Now that we've done that, we have the connection between our Apple School Manager and our Jamf Pro instance. So now that we've done that, how do we actually set up that customized setup assistant? Well, what we're able to do now is when we go to our Devices tab and then our pre-stage enrollments on the left-hand side, we're now able to see different things in here and a new button. So I have a lot of different pre-stages in my Jamf instance, and I left those in there because I want you to see that you don't have to have only one pre-stage. You can have as many of you as you want to. Some common examples that I've seen, students, teachers, faculty, staff. I've also seen uh, different departments as well. So you can customize this to whatever makes sense in your environment. And I just want you to know it's not a one size fits all. So now we're gonna go ahead and we'll select the new button. And in here, we'll have the ability to see all the different items to fill out. So in here is where we're gonna be able to set up the different screens that we either want to show or to skip for our end users. And we'll also have the ability to tie in LDAP if we want to, to require our end users to authenticate. And we'll also have the ability to, to uh, supervise these devices over the air, which I'm not sure how many of you have used Apple Configurator to supervise in the past, but being able to supervise without plugging anything in is a huge win. So once we have done that, the most important piece that I don't want you to forget is that scope tab along the top. So my nice little red box in the arrow, the scope tab is what actually makes this work on your iPads. Um, since working here at Jamf, I would say the number one call that I would get from people if, it was, if their iPad wasn't going through and respecting their uh, settings in the pre-stage was because we forgot to actually select the devices under the scope tab. So very important, if anything else, make sure you select the device and then everything else will work super nicely. So that workflow is fantastic, but what if you have devices that aren't in your Apple School Manager? Is there a way that you can get them in or enroll them? Well, great news for all of you who are wondering that. We can utilize our Apple Configurator 2 workflow. So what we're gonna do next is a step-by-step -step on how you can actually get your devices that are eligible to be an Apple School Manager into that and enroll them the same way through Jamf. So here I have my Apple Configurator 2 and I have my iPad that has been plugged into it. So I need to do a few things in Apple Configurator side to set this up in order for the iPad to receive the right settings to know that it's going into my Apple School Manager instance. So within Apple Configurator, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open up my preferences. And when I do so, I'm gonna see a screen like this. So I'm gonna select my organizations and I'm gonna go ahead and add a new one. And what we'll see is this piece here, letting us know that we're creating a new organization that is going to be tied to our supervision identity. 
I'm going to go ahead and I hit next. And then I'm going to put in my Apple ID that I use to actually enter my Apple School Manager. So you'll need to make sure you have actually set up Apple School Manager and that you do have an Apple ID that you can log into. Once we have done that, we're going to go ahead and generate a new supervision identity. Now, this is assuming that we're starting from scratch. Um, I'm not going to cover choosing the existing supervision identity in this webinar. But for our purposes, we're going to go ahead and hit done. And when we do so, it's going to look and see what my Apple ID is tied to. And it sees that I have my Jamf Apple School Manager. So super simple. Now, that's just step one. We have one more thing that we have to do, and that's to add our server. So under the servers icon, we're going to go ahead and add a new one. And in here, just letting you know that our MDM server is going to be used to prepare our devices. So we're going to go ahead and hit next. I'm going to go ahead and put in a display name for my MDM, along with the URL for my Jamf Pro server. Now this next piece, I've seen a lot of Jamf Nation posts about this, this unable to verify the server's enrollment URL. Despite how scary it looks, that's actually OK. So we're going to go ahead and hit next and just scoot on by. And once we've done that, we'll see our MDM server has now been added into Apple Configurator. So that's all we have to do. That's pretty simple. So now we're going back to my device that is now still plugged into Apple Configurator. And what we're going to do now is go ahead and select the Prepare button. So along the top, next to the Update button, we'll select our Prepare. And then we're going to be greeted with this little page here. So we're going to prepare with a manual configuration. And then we need to check the box to add to device enrollment program. We are not going to be selecting activate and complete enrollment because we want Jamf Pro to be handling that piece. We just want Apple Configurator to actually get it into Apple School Manager. And then I always have my devices be supervised. I highly suggest uh, that you do the same just because you don't necessarily have to take advantage of the different features that require supervision. But it makes it really easy that if in the future you want to impose those different settings, you don't have to wipe the device and get it supervised. And then I choose to have my devices be able to pair with other computers. You can do whatever makes sense for your environment. So I'll go ahead and hit Next. I'm going to go ahead and select my Jamf MDM server. And then I'm going to select my organization, which is also Jamf. And then on this page here, I like to select the only show some steps because it has the fewest number of things that show up. So I like to go through and do things as fast as possible. Of course, you can customize this to whatever works for you. And then lastly, if you have a Wi-Fi network that does have a password, you can add in a Wi-Fi configuration profile with the password in it. So it'll save you a little bit of time so that you don't have to enter in the password. But again, I would recommend that you actually do have the open network just to make life a little easier. So we'll go ahead and hit prepare, and then the device gets wiped. And yes, you heard that right. So do you actually have to erase your device to use enrollment using Apple School Manager? And the answer is yes. And I understand that that isn't going to be the best case scenario for a lot of you. There are some devices out there that aren't actually eligible to be put into Apple School Manager. Or maybe your devices are already in the hands of students or staff or faculty. So is there another way that we can get those devices managed and into Jamf Pro? The answer is yes. And we can use something called user initiated enrollment. And again, this is for devices that cannot be added into your Apple School Manager, or they're currently being used and they just cannot be wiped at this time. There are advantages on why you would want to utilize the Apple School Manager uh, for enrolling your devices. And the big ones are going to be being able to supervise without having to connect it to Apple Configurator, and then also making sure that the MDM profile is non-removable. So, <clears throat> excuse me, those are really big things. But even something else, so even if we have devices that they can be added in to Apple School Manager, but again, they're in use and they can't be wiped to actually go through the customized setup assistant, I would still highly advise that we move those devices into your Apple School Manager as an extra layer of security. So if those devices were to ever go into the wrong hands or go missing and get wiped, they would go back into your Apple School Manager. And then if they try to set up that iPad, it would automatically tie to your Jamf Pro server. So again, highly recommend that you utilize these Apple School Manager workflows because it will just make life a little easier for you. But continuing on on how we enroll our devices using this user-initiated enrollment, the first thing you're going to do on the iPad itself is go to your Jamf Pro URL 
forward slash enroll. When you do so, you're going to see a page very similar to this. So go ahead and put in your Jamf Pro credentials, or if you have enrollment only credentials, go ahead and put those in here. Once we have done that, I actually have a instance set up that allows me to have BYOD devices as well. But for our purposes here, we're just going to be selecting the institutionally owned. And when we select that, we have more information on what the end user knows that the IT admin can do to their iPad. So we just like to be very transparent of what we can and cannot do with these devices under management from Jamf. So I'll go ahead and hit enroll. And in here, if you have an AD server or LDAP integrated into your Jamf Pro instance, you can allow your users to assign a user. So enter in their AD credentials and assign themselves to the iPad if you want. But for our purposes, I'm just gonna go ahead and enroll. Once I do that, it's gonna let me know we're going to install the MDM profile. I'll go ahead and hit continue. And I'm prompted with this little pop-up, letting me know that we're going to open the settings on the iPad to install my MDM profile. So I'm gonna go ahead and allow this. And I'm gonna be prompted with this, with this install profile screen. I'll go ahead and hit install. And it's going to let me know the MDM profile cannot be verified, which is okay. So we'll hit install, making sure that I want to install, and yes, I do. And then it's also letting me know that it's installing my CA certificate, so establishing the trust between the device and our Jamf Pro server. I'll go ahead and hit install, asking me do I want to trust the remote management, and yes, I do. And once I've done that, I can go ahead and hit done. And we now see that the enrollment process is complete. So now if we were to go back into our settings on our iPad, we would see the MDM profile now lives on the device itself. So just a quick recap on some of the different enrollment methods that we talked about today. Our first one, talking about enrolling with Apple School Manager, really using that zero touch deployment. Secondly, we talked about how we can utilize Apple Configurator 2 to get your devices into Apple School Manager and use that zero touch workflow going forward. And then finally, we talked about user initiated enrollment, which is really great for devices that can't be put into your Apple School Manager or they're currently in use and they can't be wiped at this time. So while all of these different enrollment methods are awesome and great, Jamf Pro is a full MDM solution. So to talk a little bit more about other capabilities of our Jamf Pro, I'm gonna head back to Jen. Thanks, Kelly. Jamf Pro lets you accomplish not only zero touch deployments, but also device configuration, app management, extensive inventory, managing your security controls, and provides our users with a self-service app catalog that you can populate with approved apps, resources, bookmarks, and other tools. At Jamf, we're all about end user empowerment and giving end users the tools they need to be successful, whether it's teachers, students, staff, or employees. Jamf also offers more to help you be successful. Our professional services offer on location or remote services to customize Jamf Pro for your environment. We also offer certification courses led by our training team. You can become an expert in Jamf Pro and widen your skill sets. Finally, we have world-class support from Apple experts across the globe. We even offer 24 seven support via our premium support packages. Speaking of world-class support, of course, we are nothing without our customers, which is why we are incredibly proud of the Jamf Nation community. The community is over 50,000 members strong and is a free and open forum where Apple IT-focused individuals can learn from each other, gain best practices, or just chat. As we talked about today, we integrate with Apple's programs and services, including Apple Push Notification Service and Apple School Manager, combining volume purchase program, and the device enrollment program. With the Jamf Marketplace, we have tools and resources to help make the Jamf platform more useful to our customers. We also have the developer portal, the enablement of the community to build tools and resources to help others. You can also provide, uh, you receive support as a developer and can go through the steps needed to get your solution into the marketplace. If you have any questions about uh, what you saw in today's webinar, again, you can enter those into the chat box or you can contact us on jamf.com. And if you enjoyed the content of today's webinar, we have tons of webinars on demand. Head to jamf.com webinars. 
And make sure you also check out our new Jamf One app. It's the power of Jamf Nation in your pocket. And now I'll pass it back over to Kelly to talk about a few resources for you as you head off on your iOS deployment journey. Thanks, Jen. So today we covered our three different ways to enroll our devices, but I do realize that some of you like to have those references in front of you in more of a digital form. So here is one reference here, and Jen, I believe, is going to be pasting these links in the uh, webinar chat. So this is to actually set up the Apple School Manager, integrate that into Jamf so that you can enroll your devices. The next link that I have here is how we actually put our devices into Apple School Manager using the Apple Configurator workflow. And this is an awesome video put together by some of our Jamf support team uh, to do a step-by-step. -step. So I'd recommend having your own iPad ready next to you and just kind of follow along. It's really well done. And then lastly, the last link we have is just a link to our user initiated and how you get that set up on your Jamf Pro server. So we wanted to thank you all so much for taking the time to join us today. We hope this has been really helpful. And at this point, we would like to go ahead and open it up for some questions. All right. Thank you, Kelly. We have a couple questions that have come in. Uh, apologies for any sound issues that we were experiencing. So the first question is, what is the difference between DEP and Apple School Manager? That's a great question. So traditionally, the device enrollment program and Apple School Manager were two completely separate entities. However, now Apple has basically made Apple School Manager the umbrella and the device enrollment program, volume purchase program, and then the integration with ICIS all fall under the Apple School Manager umbrella. So I understand it can be a little bit confusing because traditionally Apple School Manager was different than the device enrollment program. However, we now have them all under the one Apple School Manager. So Apple School Manager will take care of your enrollment, your purchasing of apps, setting up managed Apple IDs, shared iPads, and then also integrating with your student information system if you choose to. Great question. Thank you. We have a couple other questions. Uh, one person asked where they can get access to this webinar later. Uh, we typically post all of our webinars on jamf.com slash webinars within a few days of the event. So you can look to that uh, later this week. And then we have another question here, which device or which enrollment is your favorite? So my favorite enrollment, which I'm not sure if I gave it away, is enrolling with the Apple School Manager, the very first one that we talked about. And again, this is simply because you have a lot of additional features such as the over-the-air supervision, making sure that the MDM profile is not removable, which I don't know about all of you, but if kids can find a way to remove management, they will. So it'll take out uh, that little extra headache. And then the extra security layer. So I mentioned a little bit earlier about how if you have devices that you're not able to uh, enroll your devices with Apple School Manager because they're in use, you can still have them moved over and have them ready to go in your pre-stage so that when they do get wiped on the next time that they come back or next time you're doing a refresh for any reason, you can enroll them that way and get that extra lock-in. Um, so again, if someone were to get a hold of that iPad that you know we enrolled it using our user-initiated enrollment, but we have it ready to go in our pre-stage, if they wipe it, it's going to come right back into your Jamf Pro server and there's nothing they can do about it. It's stuck there. So it's just another layer of security, and I'm all for making sure that your devices stay with you, and I don't want them to be wandering off uh, to places that they don't belong. So I would highly, highly, highly encourage you to at least do that, if nothing else. Great. And then we have another question here. Where can I access Apple Configurator? Great question. So Apple Configurator is going to be available in your Mac App Store. So I would go ahead and look on that. Uh, it is a Mac app, so you'll want to make sure that you have a Mac to go and find that there. And um, if it's not in the Mac app store, there's probably, if you just do like a Google search or something, you'll probably find it there. But I'm pretty sure that Mac app store link is going to be the top hit that you'll find. Great. Well, I think that is all that we have uh, for questions this afternoon. So thank you so much to Kelly and to everyone who attended today's webinar. We'll be posting the recording online in the coming days. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.